let me just see. Okay, guys. So up next, we have Nicole Perry. And Nicole, I'll give you some privileges in a moment. Um, so guys, Nicole Perry is a self-published author. And she's also a radio show talk host, an entrepreneur, and an energy enthusiast. Uh, she has been an entrepreneur for 14 years. Her mission is to support women entrepreneurs or, uh, organically and sued uh, with social media. Um, sorry, I'm on social media. Quality media tool, um, Facebook radio marketing, in-person support groups, and through written word. Um, and she is going to talk to us today. Um, and she's a very good friend of mine. I'm so privileged to have met her and um, really have the opportunity to have some deep, deep conversations with this woman occasionally. And it's uh, enhanced my life so much. So I'm happy to have her here. She's going to talk to us today about vulnerability um, and how your voice matters, which I think is really great coming right after Beck, right? So we're like, all right, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to share my journey, but I don't want to. Um, and how can I do that? So I'm going to pass the baton over to Nicole. And I'm going to unmute her and I'm going to mute my Okay, can everybody hear me? Okay, great. Glad to be here. I just want to tell you, um, thank you so much. I am using some talking notes. So this is the first time I'm doing this, but I'm really excited. Thank you, uh, Regina, for this amazing opportunity. I want to thank everybody for showing up today. Uh, for you and your business, right? But for you, my intention today is to inspire and possibly motivate you to shift your mindset a little bit. And I'm just gonna be sharing some things that I've learned throughout the years. And I did, for the record, have a photo business that I started 14 years ago. And I was following the multi-level marketing and sales, direct sales um, concept and structure. So I know um, a little bit about that if you're in that field. Um, so today I want to talk about why the vulnerability in your voice matters on air, online, and in print, and becoming that voice of trust. And I want to start with vulnerability, and I'm going to be a little bit of a talking head. So my, my little um, thing today is about 15, 20 minutes. So if you want to pop questions in, if I have time later, we'll, we'll do that later. So I want to start with vulnerability and getting clear by listening to your inner voice, right? So being vulnerable to me is about being real and about being honest. And it's about honoring and listening to yourself. It's about allowing others to see the real you underneath your skin. Uh, it's not about crying, although it can be. It's not about, um, you know, letting people see you sweat. Uh, being vulnerable is about allowing others to see you so that they can come in, right? That's what we all want. We want to bring people into our businesses and in our lives. And so when you listen to your own voice and those core values that you hold near and dear to your heart, those values can help you get clear about your message right? Everybody has a different message here today. And, um, and you have to also, of course, have trust and faith in yourself. But when you are clear about your message, right, then your message is clear, and then people will see it too. Um, so you really do want to get clear about your intention. Like, what is your intention? Many times I've had to explain myself over the years. And because what I do in radio is traditional, but then it's not really traditional. And so I was willing to explain myself because I was willing to do whatever it takes because nothing was going to ever stand in my way of following my dream, right? So I believe it's vital to set an intention around the empire that you want to build. So it's important to decide what that intention is and then build your core values around that. And I'm gonna give you an example. So my intention is to support women entrepreneurs and through my radio show and of course through the book show. Um, and one of my core values, right, 
is that I want my voice to be heard. So my intention and my value together really helps to find what my, you know, my mission is and, you know, get, get clarity. In essence, I believe every woman with a powerful mission deserves to be heard, right? So that's my tagline. Um, it's important to focus on your passion, what you're really passionate about, right? The person who's in, in the insurance industry isn't selling insurance, they're selling peace of mind. So you need to think about what you're really passionate about, what are you really selling? And, um, and anyway, uh, so it's important to focus on your passion and the, un I'm just going off script a little bit, and the unwavering desire that drives you. So maybe your passion is time freedom. Um, maybe your passion or you're driven by money. Like I have a child driven by money, not all of them are. I have a husband who's driven by pride. So maybe you're driven by pride. Maybe you're driven by education educating the public. I'm driven a little bit by education too, but for me, it is having my voice heard. And then what drives me now that my book is out is also balance and self-care, uh, especially because I'm an entrepreneur and you know we're in our home office, most of us. So that's part of my new mission with the release of the book. And I strongly believe that you have to um, let your, your mission evolve, right? Um, as you grow, your mission is going to grow. My, mine has grown. It's not the same as it was 14 years ago. Uh, I'd like to share a quote with you right now that really stuck with me. And this is, put your attention onto your intention. And uh, that is by Deepak Chopra, uh, or my, I like to call them Deepak Oprah, because uh, I listen to their meditation series. So put your attention onto your intention, right? We, our, our attention gets diverted quite a bit. I know mine does get a lot, um, but that's what I do. I pour, I pour my attention into others, into listening and into caring. And I wanna talk about caring a little bit more in a minute. But for now, I wanna share that I didn't always like my voice on the radio. And um, you know the other producers at the station all had these crystal clear and clean voices. And, but I had to learn how to love my own voice, right? The actual voice and, and my inner voice. And, um, and I had to do that in order to amplify it. Like we have to love what we do, what we do, what we stand for in order to amplify it. And um, so I chose to take my personality, my real personality and put it out on FM radio, right? It's out there in a pretty big way, it is FM. Uh, for almost eight years, and I'm respectful and PG-13 and honest and kind and a, a little bit funny, and I like to say a little bit country, a little bit rock and roll, um, but it's important to have all of those things um, sort of as part of your core. Whatever your core is, you want to make sure whatever you're putting out there, that's part of your core. So for me, part of my core is PG-13, but as you know, I don't know if you all know, but most radio people are potty mouths when they're not on the air, and I'm I'm a little bit one of those. Um, but what am I really doing when I'm putting myself out there? I am allowing people to hear my voice at its most vulnerable state, metaphorically and physically. Like I am just out there. And, um, and it's a very vulnerable place, vulnerable place to be on radio or through podcasting because you know I'm putting my opinions out there. So even you, when you're posting, you're putting your opinions out there for the world to hear. Now, um, I share a little bit of dirty laundry sometimes um, without really throwing myself under the bus. But um, whether it's podcasting, through podcasting or through radio, there are no other senses to divert the attention of the listener. So... We're taking all, I'm goose bumping myself right now. We're taking all the other senses away and the only thing they're using is their hearing. And when you take that away, the one sense is heightened, right? And so just like reading a book, you know, um, your, your, your thoughts are heightened. And so video is different because there's lots of other things to divert, but podcasting and the written word has a focus on one thing, which is your voice and your thoughts. 
So I did face my fears in the beginning with the radio show, um, even with publishing my book, uh, because I was on a mission, right? So nothing was going to get in my way. You know, if there's a fear, you know, you kind of, you know, I, I stood in it, I walked through it. Um, and uh, let's see here, sorry, I got off track. Uh, and I, I was not even um, going to stop or let anything get in my way um, of being fearful of the sound of my own voice, right? Like I, I or what people might think of me. Um, and so I did all of that, stood in my fears by honoring my own core values, listening to my inner voice, being open to be seen in a vulnerable light, right? And that's how I faced it. Um, and I did it all by holding myself accountable too. Like, I believe we have to hold ourselves accountable. If you can't get a buddy, a partner, but you got to do most of it on your own, you know, just like exercise, no one's going to make you get a nice tight, butt. you have to do it on your own. So I want to talk about marketing now. Uh, basically, I believe marketing is all about respecting your voice while simultaneously respecting the voice of others. I believe marketing is all about energy and trust. And of course there's fake marketing, Regina knows, like greenwashing or this one I just created, Regina, label lies. Um, and we all know about the companies that are out there that do it, but I don't do it, okay? So I tell the facts as I know it. I tell the truth on air, online and in print. And I don't shoot upon myself. I'm goosebumping myself again. I don't shoot upon myself. I don't shoot upon anyone else. Um, because in my opinion, respect is huge when it comes to marketing yourself. And real marketing is about making a connection. And I think Beck said that earlier. It's important to be thoughtful and it's important to care. And I cannot stress caring enough. You have to care enough. I care about my listeners. I care about my viewers. And now I care about my readers. And it's important to care about everything I read, right? And everything I type. And all I have to do to lift sort of that heavy weight that can be on my shoulders or maybe it's on yours about what to say is to pour my focus and energy into caring about what I'm going to say. Just care. Say it from the heart. You know, say it with love. Say it with grace, kindness, you know, thoughtful intention. Um, we all know that the body craves what we feed it. And the mind is in the body. And so our minds crave what we feed it too. And so it's a good idea to feed our minds but also the minds we influence with innovative ideas and forward thinking and creative solutions, right? And, uh, and, and doing that in a vulnerable way brings people in. It brings people closer together. Regardless of our business model, we are all in marketing and sales, right? I mean, I think everybody can agree with that. Uh, and when it comes to marketing ourselves and our businesses, we can easily fall into the blame game. We can fall into that or inviting excuses and why we can't do this and why we can't do that. Oh, I'm too small. Um, no one's listening to me. Um, oh, how about this great one? I'm only a self-publisher, right? So I've second guessed myself many times, wondering if I'm following the right path, uh, but I'm here to tell you, please hear this. People hear the complaining and the blaming. People hear the complaining and the blaming. The bottom line is we all need to put our professional voice out there if we want to become the voice of trust. If we want to build that empire that we want to, you know, that we're dreaming of, people can feel desperation, right? I feel it when I feel other people are being desperate. I can feel the desperation and, you know, 
it's, it doesn't feel good. So we have to come from a place of abundance and a place of confidence, a place of love, a place of trust, right? In our own instincts. As my business has grown, I have kept my voice consistent online, right? It just keeps evolving and I just cut and paste and, you know, make sure everything is, is, you know, pretty consistent across the board. My website and my social media also reflect the vulnerability within me because I am who I am in person, online and in print. Like I'm me everywhere I go. And so um, it doesn't change. Like it's, it's hardly any different at all. Uh, it might be amped up a teeny bit, but it's, it's, it's real me. And it's clear to anyone who reads my copy on my website. So it, you know, if you want that clarity for other people to feel that clarity with you uh, when they're reading your stuff, it's important to get clear. Um, marketing takes effort, right? It takes action. So when you're in the flow and your energy is just flowing with marketing ideas and things, let it show, put it out there. The universe loves speed. So when you think of something, put it out there. If you can write it down for later, get it out there. Um, universe loves speed. Um, stand in your value. When you have a great idea, run with it. It can be effortless taking the path of least resistance. If you're trying to create something to put out there to market yourself and you're just stuck, 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 you know, walk away, you know, shift your energy, come back to it later. Um, all right, let's see here. I lost my place. Ah. All right. Oh my God. There's so much material out there. Everywhere we look around in our daily lives, there is so much material to use and to spin into positivity. We can easily seek and find stuff, right? It, it, not even on social media, everywhere, grocery store, wherever, to incorporate into our business voice. Marketing is coming at us from every single angle, constantly from every source. So I feel like it's a gift. When I see some really bogus marketing, it's a gift for me to turn it around and share something insightful, right? There's so much stuff at our finger, fingertips. It's, it's like right at the tip of our nose. We just need to be open to see it and get excited. As soon as you see something, you know, get excited and share something positive. Health and wellness is everywhere. Like it, it was effortless to add topic after topic um, to each chapter in my book. Basically, we don't really have to try that hard, right? To, to figure out how to market ourselves. It, we, all we have to do is look around, but we have to know what it is that we want to see. What do we want to see? Put something that you want to see out there, right? And spin the positivity. That's what I did in my book. I put my thoughts because that's what I wanted to see in the world. My positive spin, my thoughts. Um, so now I want to talk about the bigger picture and I'm almost done. I'm wrapping it up and I have way, way tons of time. So maybe there's a, a question I can answer. Um, so this is the bigger picture. This is about sharing your thoughts with the world, right? Using your voice in a respectful way is so important. This is my belief. Like I talk about my family in my book. I talk about my parents. I talk about my peers, um, but I use my voice to respectfully address, respectfully address misconceptions, confusion, and learned behavior. I used my vulnerable and real honest thoughts to be a change agent in the world right? Our, our platforms, our missions are way more powerful than the platforms we're on. Um, and this is vulnerability at its core, right? To embrace our own judgment and intuition, turn negativity into positivity. And, you know, saying what we, what we want, making sure it's clear for our, be it, it's best to do what we want and make sure it's clear and follow the intu intuition for our business. It's the best thing for our business. 
and re being respectful to others and competition as well, while owning and still honoring how we feel and what we want to say, and but being respectful of the competition. So it's important to know and accept that ideas um, and you know your business takes time to be recognized. I think Beck touched on that too. Um, they say it's three to five years for the average entrepreneur. Uh, Justin Bieber didn't become successful overnight. He was like a four-year-old kid with his mom, you know, trucking it to all his different events. And neither did Lady Gaga. And I know she just won a bunch of awards. So that's why I threw that in there. Um, we have to live, breathe, and eat what we love. Regina does this. I mean, we really have to do that. We have to continue to be open to a deeper understanding around our passion and our mission. We have to hold high expectations of ourselves and simultaneously at the same time be understanding. So we have to have the high expectations, but we still have to be understanding. Um, we can look for, uh, to mentors for in inspiration to enhance our own uniqueness. We can drive our businesses further by caring about what we say. Caring, care is huge. And I wanna stop here for a second because I've heard people say um, so many times, oh, I don't care, I just wanna get it done, or I don't care what I eat for dinner, or I don't care how I look, or I don't care about this, or I don't, and I've heard it like so many times and it's just, for me, it, it's sad because I just want everyone to care about everything. Um, so solidifying our, sorry, I was on a tangent. Solidifying ourselves as an expert in our fields takes time. And it's what we do with our time that matters, right? Just like time heals all wounds. It's not the time that heals all wounds. It's what we do in that time. Uh, and if we, and if we build one, solid relationship at a time and see every opportunity as the stage that it is, right? We can become that voice of trust and the expert in our field. So my question is, what will you do with the vulnerability in your own voice to become the voice of trust? Thank you. So I don't know if there are any questions in here. I can't multitask like yeah, that. Yeah, I, I have one for you. Um, actually, Leslie um, put a question in and I thought it was a really good question and it might give you an opportunity to address it because um, I think it's something that a lot of people struggle with. So I'll just read it. Okay. Um, she said, my personality is highly loud, intense. Some people mistake it for pushy or stubborn. Should I tone it down or just be 100% real? I feel like even when I am professional, I'm extremely passionate and I've always struggled with being normal or fitting in, which I have so much to say, but I'm gonna let the experts speak, um, uh, especially in the corporate world. So what are your thoughts on that? Oh boy. Um, I, I, you know, here, here's a silly example. I was at a giant networking event one time where there were probably, I don't know, 80 women in the, in the room and it was like a luncheon thing. And I was showing my tattoos. So I was wearing a tank top and my tattoos were showing. And I'm not corporate. I'm not a corporate person. I never have been. I'm a radio talk show host. I can wear jeans to the radio station if I want. I don't because I like to dress up. But I asked um, a, a lady, a very nice lady, um, who happened to be a dressing expert. And I asked her, so what are your thoughts about, you know, tattoos these days? Because lots of people have them. And she said, well, there's a time and a place for everything. And I, I don't know what I thought to that. I thought there is a time and a place for everything, but I don't live in a prudish world. And I, I don't know, I just wasn't really crazy about her advice. I, I felt like, no, this is who I am. I am my brand. It's, it, 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 you know, my tattoos are what they are and I love them. And I, I don't, I love it when I can show them. And 
so I, I'm not sure how to answer that question. I think that it's important to stay true to your core, to who you are, and the right people will be attracted to you, right? I mean, I want to attract people that are like me. Yeah. <laughs> right? Well, yes. And, and for, I've, 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 clients, heard, right? I've heard you speak and I've heard other people speak. And I kind of even would say to wrap up, also wrap up kind of what, or pull in what Beck had said, Leslie and anybody else who feels that way, including myself, because sometimes I'm like, oh, oh. but here's the thing is that let's just say you're out there and you're putting yourself out there and you're not being genuine to who you are and you're pretending to be maybe a little more demure than you really are. And then that person comes into your world and they're expecting this person that's in this box who is not I who you that. are. Do you mm -hmm. really want to work with them? Yeah, I love anyway? that. <laughs> you know right? what? Let me share another quote Please. that I, yep. I can't remember it. Um, but it, it was, I think it was Deepak Chopra again, and it was something about when we shrink at the suggestions of others, then we're giving our power away. There you go. Write that one down. Say it again. When we, and I, it's not actually quoted quote. <laughs> That's all right. Well, we always mess them up, <laughs> but I'll find it if you want. When we shrink at the other at others suggestions like when we like you know because it sounds like this gal uh what, who was it leslie mm -hmm. if somebody was like you know oh should i shrink and be smaller than i really am when we shrink we're giving our power away yeah. so but if i have time i would like to read a card and i think i have a little bit of time Yes. Uh, let's see. Yeah, you have a few minutes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And is there any other question that we should uh, there was one other? Hold on one second. Uh, so, um, more and then I'll read the card. Yeah. Terry asked, as someone who is just starting out, and I completely embrace my vulnerability. I found it's empowering. Awesome. Um, what is your biggest recommendation other than be consistent over the next three years? Because that's what everybody says. Go out there and be consistent. So she embraces her invulnerability, but she's just starting out. What would you say? I'm going to give her the suggestion we've done in our team meetings where you set a timer for three minutes, six minutes, whatever you want, and you just keep writing out what you want. And you don't let the pen stop from the paper. And you just, whatever, how many minutes you want to do it, it's a journaling thing. But the, the importance is when you write, you know, retirement, 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 even if you're writing the same word over and over again, you, your, your, your body will unclick the door and it will open and the, the, the words will come through. And if you do that on a regular basis during this next three to five year journey, uh, you will get closer to what you want a lot faster. Because when you focus on what you want, right? You know, if we focus on what we don't want, I don't want to argue. I don't want to gain weight. I don't want to, you know, if we focus on what we don't want, it's, it only comes to us. So we have to focus on what we want. So I would say that would like, that will like propel you. Awesome. Great. Right. Can I read this card? So this okay. is my um, yes. uh, tarot cards. So this one is the balance and integration card. And this is all about vulnerability, of course and having an imperfect heart and the potential, this is potential, a potential limiting belief. I don't know if I'm truly living my life purpose and the power of suggestion in vulnerability. There is freedom. I can be open and feed my heart what it craves. I can accept that discovering my life purpose is part of a beautiful journey. The affirmation, I am purposeful. I have purpose in all that I say and all that I am and all that I do. So I want to thank awesome. you, Regina.